What's up guys, my name is Aster. If you're already subbed to me, then welcome back. Welcome to this new series. If you are not already subbed to me and you're just clicking on the video for the title and the uh, thumbnail, then welcome to the channel. If you enjoy the content, make sure to check out the other videos that I have. If you do enjoy those, you can hit the subscribe button, like a couple of videos, comment. Commenting is always nice. It lets me know how you guys feel about the, uh, the content, of course. Uh, and this is a new series that I decided to do for League Format. Um, now that I have my foot in the door a little bit and a little bit of experience as well in the league format, uh, if you don't know what draft format is, then check out the GBA, the NPL, uh, the PPL, UCL, all of those are Pokemon uh, leagues, uh, for league draft format. Uh, and I decided to take all of the new Pokemon that we were given in Gen 7, because I haven't really done anything with that other than Showdown Lives, and cover them in terms of league format. Uh, and what we're also going to be doing with this series is that after every two episodes, I'm going to be taking uh, the Pokemon that we covered and replacing a Pokemon on a successful draft team from the past's uh, team and replace them with that Pokemon of a similar point value or tiering or typing even and use them to face off against each other. So this means that I need help. Uh, I need people that uh, are my friends, of course, from the community, uh, and any one of you guys that want to join in on one of these and want to be on YouTube for a short amount of time, uh, if you haven't already, uh, then hit me up, let me know, and basically these first two are going to be commentated and covered only by me, uh, and all the future ones I'm going to have to tr try to get people on board uh, so that I don't have to do these reviews alone, which is always a little more fun as well. So let's hop right into it. I know you guys are tired of hearing me speak. The first Pokemon that we're going to be covering, and the first four actually, they're very similar of course, uh, is going to be Tapu Lele, and we're going to be doing the other three Tapus on the next three episodes. So Tapu Lele is a Pokemon that has been up for uh, debate a little bit in the League format scene uh, as to whether or not it should be allowed in League format. Uh, and I'll get into that in a second as to why, but first let's look at Tapu Lele's stat distribution. We have a HP stat of 70, attack of 85, um, defense of 75, special attack of 130, special defense of 115, and a great speed of 95. So what makes this Pokemon so good and, uh, and so threatening that it is up for potential ban in League format? It does only have a, a 570 base stat total, which is just below the Lake Trio, uh, being a Zelf, Uxie, and Mesprit, which hit 580, and a lot lower than Mew uh, and Celebi and all those one ofs uh, that hit base 600. Well, the reason this Pokemon is uh, being considered for banning is that it gets access to an ability known as Psychic Terrain. All of the Tapus get their own terrain, and Tapu Lele's is probably the most fearsome of all of the terrains. Uh, psychic Terrain gives it a boost for its Psychic type attacks. Essentially, if you are a Choice Specs variant of Tapu Lele, you have a built-in Nasty Plot when you hit a Psychic type move, which is devastating. Uh, it's a lot more than you think. We're going to go over some calcs in a second. Uh, but the other reason is that its ability, uh, Psychic Terrain, also gives it and its team members and every other Pokemon uh, on the field, including your opponents, an immunity to priority for as long as the Psychic Terrain is up. This is a new terrain that was introduced, uh, and it's crazy because you look at a Pokemon like Scizor that would normally be able to check something like Tapu Lele, and it can't hit it with its Stab Bullet Punch. Uh, because of the psychic terrain. Not only that, it prevents your the rest of your team, so let's say you have a dragon that's four times weak to ice, uh, can't be hit by Mamoswine's Ice Shard, or anything else's for that matter, for the turns that the psychic terrain is up. So that's pretty crazy that a Pokemon can give access that much team support while also being a crazy wall breaker because of that 130 special attack stat. Let's look at some of its notable moves real quick. Psychic and Psyshock, of course, being its main stabs alongside Moonblast, the Fairy Stab. If I didn't cover it, Tapu Lele is a Fairy and Psychic type. Uh, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, Thunderbolt, Nature's Madness, which I'm starting to find uh, a very interesting move uh, on the ladder. It's able to take off half of the target's HP. Uh, it's kind of like Super Fang, which is really, really good because on switch-ins to resists, which Tapu Lele doesn't have many of, but anyway... Um, it's able to just take off half the HP just like that, so if you don't have reliable recovery, uh, you've just lost half your health. 
then we have Calm Mind, Taunt, and Aromatherapy. These are more, well, Calm Mind being a, set a setup move. Taunt, uh, great move, uh, especially with Tapu Lele's 95. Uh, speed it's able to stop Pokemon with reliable recovery from healing up and continue to wall break past that and aromatherapy even further team support once again uh, able to heal up status if you don't have another uh, heal beller or aromatherapy user on your team so now let's look at some calcs like I said before Tapu Lele doesn't have a lot of switch-ins let's start with Chansey so 252 special attack timid choice specs uh, Psy Shock from Tapu Lele to a max HP, max defense, which is not even the actual set on Showdown uh, that you should be using. Uh, Bold Nature, Chansey, takes 55 to 65 from a Psy Shock, uh, from Choice Specs, of course. But Life Orb even has, has a chance to two hit KO like uh, the Choice Specs variant does. So this is crazy. A Pokemon that is normally supposed to wall any and all special attackers can't take two hits from this thing under Psychic Terrain. Uh, let's see the next one, 252 Special Attack Choice Specs once again. Tapu Lele's Thunderbolt to a max HP, max special defense Celesteela is doing 52 to 62%, being a 99.6% chance to do it KO after Leftovers Recovery if that's even their item. Uh, otherwise, it's a guaranteed to it KO. Um, so this uh, is another a Steel type that is supposed to wall out uh, Tapu Lele completely. We're going to hit a few Steel types along the way as you guys are going to see. But you're probably saying, well, why, why don't you just take off the choice specs? Let's see how good it is without it. Okay, well, let's give it different boosting items. 252 Modest Life Orb Focus Blast to a 252 HP, 52 Spit F, no boosting nature. It's not careful. Ferrothorn, 89 to 105. This is a guaranteed one hit KO after one layer of spikes. Uh, it's even got a very good chance to Oko after uh, one Stealth Rock switch in. Uh, now, you might be thinking, okay, well, you didn't put max spit off on Ferrothorn. Yes, that's fine, but because of uh, the fact that Tapu Lele is typically going to run something like Shadow Ball, or even that it'll be in Psychic terrain and it can hit with Psychic, means that if Ferrothorn tries to switch in and it gets caught by a, a Focus Blast, it's basically dead because you don't even have to risk missing the next Focus Blast. Psychic should technically do the job even after that. So, that's a Life Orb Modest variant. Let's look at a Timid Expert Belt variant. Focus Blast versus Max HP, Max Spadef, Heat Ran now. 55 to 66% guaranteed to hit KO after leftovers. This is all out special defense Heat Ran. So it can't even hit you back that hard because of the 115 special defense, even with Flash Cannon. And you technically outspeed it if it's not invested in speed. So you will be hitting it first uh, before it can even get a chance to Flash Cannon you. Let's look at a Pokemon that is supposed to switch in decently well to Fairy. Uh, and Psychic Coverage being Mega Scizor. So, 252 Choice Specs, uh, Modest, Hidden Power Fire to a Max HP, Max Spadef Scizor. Again, I just stretched these out. This is not even the typical set that you should run. Uh, takes 90 to 106. This is guaranteed one hit KO after Stealth Rocks. So, a Pokemon that is supposed to switch in well to Stabs uh, can't take a Hidden Power Fire, which it normally should be able to as well, and it just can't because of that quad weakness. So, uh, and not to mention, we did cover this before, but Mega Scizor can't hit Tapu Lele back with its best stab being Bullet Punch. So that's also something to keep in mind. Let's look at a Psychic, a bulky Psychic type that also has Steel typing like Bronzong. So, this is a Life Orb Modest Max, uh, max Investment Tapu Lele Shadow Ball to a Max HP or almost Max HP Max Special Defense Bronzong. Does 47 to 57. This is a 40.2% chance to two hit KO after leftovers recovery with no hazards up, meaning that if it's not, uh, meaning that if it's heat proof and a spike is up, it should be a two hit KO. Uh, rocks help to two hit KO becomes a positive chance. It becomes a roll in your favor to two hit KO it. So uh, very very strong. Of course, you're only taking nine percent of return, nine to ten percent from the life orb, so you can afford it. And then finally, we have uh, the 252 special attack. Tapu Lele Shadow Ball, um, this is a modest nature, versus max, max HP, max special defense, Alolan Marowak, which has been getting a lot of play on the ladder lately, does 49 to 58%, being a 98.8% chance to hit KO, and once again, because of your speed, uh, if you manage to do, let's say, 80% to this thing on the switch, in, it's probably not fully spideth, uh, it's probably max offensive, right? So you could run something like a Cassive Berry in League format to be able to take its Shadow Bone on the following turn and then just knock it out with the Shadow Ball. 
you'll always outspeed a little in Marowak unless it's scarfed. Uh, even if it's max investment uh, invested, all you need is a little bit of investment to outspeed that, and you should be good to go. So, of course, Tapu Lele can play with its speed so, so well, because typically um, its wall-breaking capabilities uh, coming in on walls means that they're typically slower than you are. So, that's that's what Tapu Lele can do to a lot of Pokemon that are supposed to switch into Psychic types really, really well. Uh, now let's look at some checks and counters to uh, Tapu Lele. One of them being Mega Aggron, very solid. Uh, it does get hit pretty hard with the Focus Blast, but it's not too hit KO'd thanks to its ability Filter, uh, and you're able to smack Tapu Lele back with a Steel move. Uh, then we have Incineroar, which can switch in decently well uh, to everything but Moonblast. It's unaffected by the Psychic type coverage, uh, and it's got a very high HP and Spidef stat, so you can tailor it to take on Tapu Lele. You can also hit it back pretty hard too, because Lele's physical defense is not that great. Alolan Muk, another Pokemon with great HP, great special defense, unaffected by the Psychic uh, Psychic type stab. And finally, we have Specially Defensive Rachi, which is the only Psychic type that I could think of that can switch into a Psychic, followed by a uh, a shadow ball and be able to hit Tapu Lele back for super effective damage and do a lot to it uh, Also giving it the potential to flinch it naturally outspeeds Tapu Lele as well So if it doesn't have any speed investment and it's fully poured into HP uh, You can iron head flinch it down until it goes down. So uh, next up, we're going to be looking at good partners for Tapu Lele. We're actually going to finish it off there uh, with good partners for uh, the Pokemon. If you're going to be drafting Tapu Lele in your league, uh, then you might be wanting to look at some of these Pokemon. The first category is Pursuit Trappers or Dark Types in general. Um, Pokemon to deal with bulky Psychic types on the opposing end. Uh, like we covered before, Bronzong is a decent switch into Tapu Lele, especially, especially if it's choiced and locked into a uh, psychic type move uh, then you can just pr pursue trap um, pr pretty much uh, any one of the psychic types that can switch into that uh, one notable one is Bisharp. Bisharp is extremely good with Tapu Lele because it is immune or resists all of Tapu Lele's weaknesses being steel poison and ghost uh, and of course able to pursue trap the ghosts that would normally uh, threaten it uh, then we have Drapion and Skuntank, uh, being resistant to Poison and Ghost. Uh, Drapion can also set up Toxic Spikes, which can help with wall breaking. We'll get into another one of those in a second. Uh, physical Walls, in general, Intimidators, uh, working back into the Dark Types, Crocodile and Scrafty, very, very good ones, uh, as they can uh, take on, once again, Ghosts. Uh, they can take on uh, Poison Types pretty well. Crocodile can hit them for super effective damage. It can also hit Steel Types. Uh, Bisharp and Crocodile, I think, are two of the best par partners for Tapu Lele. Uh, then we have Arcanine. It's a Fire Type that can switch into Steel Type moves if you're looking for a physical wall. Uh, Arcanine is probably one of the best ones because physical moves, you're typically, uh, typically going to be looking at Iron Head. There aren't a lot of good physical Ghost moves. So you're not going to be too worried about that. Maybe poison, things like poison jab, uh, but even Arcanine can take those after an Intimidate. Then we have Salamence if you're trying to complete a Fairy Dragon Steel Core. Salamence is a great Intimidator. Uh, it also gets rid of hazards on your side. Uh, just great to pair with it in general. And then uh, a check and counter that we also uh, covered earlier, Mega Aggron very good Pokemon to pair with Tapu Lele because if you're in league format and only one person can have it, that means that you don't need to deal with it any anymore for the rest of the season. Uh, as well as Skarmory. Skarmory is a very good Pokemon. Once again, we mentioned spike stacking before. Uh, if you can do that in conjunction with Tapu Lele, you can break teams down very, very easily. You can even run a Choice Scarf on Tapu Lele because of its great uh, speed stat at 95 and be able to wall break that way if you choose to. So, uh, all of these Pokemon pair very nicely, and that's pretty much going to cover it, guys. That's uh, that's the episode. If there's anything that I missed, make sure to leave it down below in the comment section. This episode is going to be a little bit longer, uh, of course, because this is my first time at it, and I had that little long intro at the beginning, but I'm going to try to keep these to about 10 minutes uh, per episode. So the next one that we do on Tapu Koko, be looking out for that one, should be about 10 minutes long and not 14, so... If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys on the next episode. Ciao!